MZTV. The Axe 2828 position is so desperate that you should see the scriptures it tries to appropriate to quote prove unquote its contentions. Scriptures that in no way prove the contention. Scriptures that in fact are so twisted and manipulated and really tied to a chair and tortured that uh, you will be shocked and amazed. I'm going to bring you one of those scriptures today here at the end of the week on MZTV. Welcome everyone. I'm Martin Zender. And the great thing about this again is because I'm forced to expose this teaching and analyze verses that are used by our brother Clyde Pilkington to to try to force this illicit teaching on the unwary, I'm bringing out a truth that I've never brought to you before. It's an amazing, wonderful thing. It's a gift. It's a gift that the Old Testament prophets gave to Paul to help him along in his teaching. Wow, I love this. Now I'm going to quote Clyde again. You may get, be getting tired of hearing it. That's okay. I, here, we got to do this. Here we go. Quote from Clyde, volume 490 of Bible Students Notebook. According to Romans 15, 4 through 13, the early ministry and epistles of Paul were founded on the Old Testament and Israel. I've been spending this entire week proving to you, using 25 verses from Paul's early letters, which is by no means an exhaustive list, to show that very little of Paul's early writings were founded on the Old Testament and Israel. In fact, I'll go so far as to say none of it was. None of it was. But Paul uses verses to help his teaching, his distinct teaching, his special teaching, in which he reveals secrets hidden from the eons in God. So Klein's original statement. Now, based on the 25 proof verses I gave you, there's no way possible that Romans 15, 4 through 13 can be saying that the early ministry and epistles of Paul were founded on the Old Testament and Israel. There's no way Romans 15, 4 through 13 can be saying that. But what, we're, what, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're going to look into it for ourselves because we're, we're Bereans. We search the scriptures. Clyde says that this passage of Paul proves that the early ministry and epistles of Paul were founded on the Old Testament and Israel, let's check it out. Let's look at it. I read it earlier this week. I'm going to read it again. I might not read it exhaustively because I'm going to be commenting on it anyway, so you'll, you'll get the whole thing. For whatever was written before, and here's the main thing that he twists, Clyde does. For whatever was written before, that is, in the Old Testament and in Israel, was written for this teaching of ours, for this teaching of ours. It's not that this teaching of ours was founded on the Old Testament because I've proven that it's, it wasn't, it's not, none of it is. But that Paul is borrowing, and Paul does this all the time, and this confuses a lot of people. Paul borrows verses from Israel to suggest certain things that are for his teaching. For whatever was written before was written for this teaching of ours. It wasn't founded on it. What a difference. You see the twist? My gosh, it's, it's a major twist. This is a pretzel. What a difference between for this teaching of ours and our teaching is founded upon the Old Testament and Israel. Paul goes on, that through the endurance and the consolation of the Scriptures, we may have expectation. And then Paul does this beautiful thing. 
He says this, Now may the God of endurance and consolation grant you to be mutually disposed to one another according to Christ Jesus, that with one accord, with one mouth, you may be glorifying the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The nations were going to glorify God for what Paul was about to tell them in this passage. Wherefore, be taking one another to yourselves, according as Christ also took you to himself for the glory of God. I love this. What Paul is saying here is gather yourselves around because I'm going to lay something on you that's going to absolutely thrill you. Paul is telling them that there's actually scripture in the Old Testament that suggests that God is going to do something with the nations, that God is going to visit the nations, that God is has something in store for the nations. Nobody knew what specifically it was because that part is involved with this teaching of ours. You see, but all Scripture is inspired by God for correction, for teaching, that the man of God may be fitted out for every good act. For I am saying that Christ has become the servant of the circumcision for the sake of the truth of God to confirm the patriarchal promises. So Paul is saying when Jesus Christ was on earth, he was for the circumcision. He only spoke to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He only sent his disciples to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So you have no expectation there. Christ, according to flesh, was a minister of the circumcision to confirm the patriarchal promises. Yet, quoting Paul, yet the nations are to glorify God for his mercy according as it is written. Quote, therefore, I shall be acclaiming thee among the nations. What Paul is doing here now is he's bringing to them broad references in the scripture to the fact that God has not forgotten about the nations, that at some time in the future, God is going to do something with the nations. For Paul's message. Let's go on. Well, Paul's quoting the scripture. Therefore, I shall be acclaiming thee among the nations. All these passages can be found in the Hebrew scriptures. And again, he is saying, oh, right, I forgot this one. And to thy name shall I be playing music. And again, he is saying, be merry, ye nations, with his people. Be merry, ye nations. Wow. Wow. The Romans or the Corinthians, the Galatians would have been thrilled to hear this. And again, he is saying, praise the Lord, all the nations. So Paul had recourse because there was broad promises that God was going to do something with the nations. That's as detailed as it gets. It's not detailed here at all. But it just says, be merry, ye nations. Why? Why should we be merry? Doesn't say. Because that belongs to, quote, this message of ours. All this is, is Paul bringing verses from the Hebrew Scriptures that God will do something with the nations. I think I heard myself say that like three times. It, it must bear repeating. Praise the Lord, all the nations, and, quote, let all the peoples laud him. Paul again, quoting him, and again, Isaiah is saying, there will be, quote, the root of Jesse, and he who is rising to be chief of the nations. On him will the nations rely. And at this point, Paul would have pictured his listeners uh, as this letter was being read to the Roman Ecclesia. He's just picturing the people going, oh, wow, we thought we were completely left behind. We didn't know there was even a suggestion that God was going to do something among the nations of all people, the nation, not Israelites. Wow, that's amazing. So Paul finishes this way. He's like, he's almost smug about it. He's like, there you go, kids. Now, may the God of expectation be filling you with all joy and peace in believing for you to be superabounding in expectation. This is about expectation in the power of Holy Spirit. Expectation is something you're waiting for that you don't know what it is yet. You don't know what it is, but you have an expectation now that you didn't have before. And little did they dream that Paul was going to bring them verses from the God of Israel concerning them. But it's for an expectation. That is, at, before Paul writes, it's unknown. So all those 25 passages I gave you were unknown truths. 
belonging to this message of ours, unknown truths that were unfounded, not founded on the Hebrew Scriptures or Israel. But there are passages from Israel saying that God is going to visit the nations. He's going to do something that are going to make the nations be merry. So in this passage, Paul quotes Hebrew Scriptures five times. Five times the word nations is mentioned. Once, the peoples. So why do you think Paul's doing this? He tells, him, he tells us himself in the text that through the endurance and consolation of the Scriptures, we may have an expectation. And I referenced this verse earlier. Here it is, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All Scripture is inspired by God and is beneficial for teaching, for exposure, for correction, for discipline in righteousness, that the man of God may be equipped, fitted out for every good act. So Paul is using these ancient inspired writings through the endurance of the scriptures to assure the nations that God has always promised to remember and bless them. But see, God did not say exactly how he would remember and bless the nations because, as we've seen, these were secrets unfounded on Israel and the scriptures, secrets kept for Paul. So the immediate consolation for the Romans here would be that evidence existed in Israel's writings that God would remember the nations and give them something to expect and to be happy about. So try to put yourself back in the place of the Romans, some of who knew the history of Israel. These verses would help the nations, help the Romans specifically, to know that Paul's not crazy. Paul's not crazy after all. And Peter, Paul would have given these verses to Peter. You know he did when he went to Jerusalem to submit his gospel to the chiefs. Of course he would have given these, nation, these verses to Peter concerning the nations. But again, there's no specifics here concerning those secrets. It's merely a broad promise that the nations would have reason to celebrate. One, I'll be acclaiming you among the nations. Two, be merry, ye nations. Three, praise the Lord, all the nations. Four, let the peoples laud him. Five, on him will the nations rely. So now let's go back to the opening statement of this passage, which is Romans 15, 4. For whatever was written before was written for this teaching of ours. Make note of this. Those things that were written before in the scriptures were not about the teaching of Paul. Nothing about it. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Paul's teachings were not founded on any of these scriptures. But they were written for the teaching of Paul. God put these passages in his word so that Paul could use them to prove to the nations that God always promised to remember them. I said it again another way. I keep saying it because this is amazing. Paul's teaching is absent, completely absent from these passages. So now you see the manipulation of this verse. Man, has this verse, verse been manipulated by Clyde. To use this verse to say that the early ministry and epistles of Paul are founded on the Old Testament in Israel, as though nothing new came from Paul's pen until after Acts 20, 28. It's not only misleading, it's mistaken completely. Mistaken. We've already seen how mistaken it is by the 25 verses I quoted to you. What this is, ladies and gentlemen, this is, I hate to be this bold and frank about it. Actually, no, I don't. I love being this bold and frank. This is manipulation of a verse to suit an agenda. This is a classic twisting of a verse. What a difference between these scripture passages being for us and Paul's gospel being founded. Those verses are not about Paul's gospel. Those verses quoted by Paul are nothing about his gospel. Nothing. Nothing about his early letters. Nothing. Nothing about his early teaching. Nothing. It's about God's promise to someday bless the nations. That's all it is. This verse has been manipulated, tortured. That this verse is called into play in the interest of proving that Paul taught nothing new before his prison epistles? To me, and I think to you, 
This serves only to expose the desperation of the position. The Acts 28, 28 position. To show how little evidence, no evidence, there's no evidence actually exists for it. Klein states that Paul's early teachings in his early letters were founded upon the Old Testament of Israel. Far from the truth. They were founded on a revelation of Jesus Christ. Galatians 1.12 I was taught these things from Jesus Christ. I did not learn them. I wasn't taught them in Hebrew school. I wasn't taught them in Pharisee school. I wasn't taught them by Peter. I wasn't taught them by these quotes from the Old Testament I just gave you. These quotes from the Old Testament that I just gave you, I imagine Paul saying, do not inform, do not contribute to, have nothing to do with the glorious specifics of the secrets that I am revealing to you out the gate. In my first letter I ever wrote, the second letter, the third letter, that Paul says he was not taught his evangel. His evangel was founded on a revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was not walking around yet when these Old Testament verses were written. Paul's truth is not founded on Israel and the Old Testament is founded on a revelation from the glorified Christ, from Jesus Christ. And I'm going to close with this just to remind you of an even more startling statement from the pen of Clyde Pilkington, page 4323 of Clyde's article concerning the body of Christ in volume 490 of Bible students notebook quote dispensational truth relevant for our day was revealed by Paul after Acts 28 that is when Paul's an old man in prison and is recorded in his latter epistles so according to this teaching none of Paul's early letters including Romans contains relevant truth ladies and gentlemen I don't know what else I can add to this but of course next week I will add some to this but as I have always said the best proof against this Acts 28 28 teaching is the quote proof offered for it.